Hey guys, how you doing? I hope you're well. I'm in Cornwall again, hooray! So yeah, my last video was filmed in Cornwall about a month ago and we're back down again, enjoying the good life. So we've done some camping, which has been really good fun actually, although I think after four nights sleeping on a camp bed, I definitely appreciated coming back to a real bed. We've been eating at lots of local restaurants, and yesterday I did a seaweed foraging course, which is something I've been meaning to do for a really long time, and I finally managed to book it in whilst we're down here. And I spent three hours walking the coastline with a seaweed foraging expert, and she taught me through different types of seaweed, how to cook or prepare them, which ones I could just eat there and then on the spot. So I really enjoyed dulse, that was really nice, and sea greens, also known as, I'm going to try and remember this, gut weed. And I brought home some sea spaghetti and kelp as well. So we ate the sea spaghetti last night with sauteed garlic and some olive oil, it was really good. And I'm going to try and work out what to do with the kelp, but I'm pretty sure I have to just boil it and make a sort of seaweed stock, which I can add to broths stews, soups, etc. So what I'm trying to say is that we've had a marvellous time in Cornwall so far. I do want to point out that I'm wearing a bikini top underneath this because it's laundry day and I've run out of clothes to wear. So today's video is a sort of plastic free July roundup, uh, how I got on, some of the plastic that came in, I've saved it in a little jar right here, and also I want to share with you some of the things that friends and family did, which was a pretty big deal for me this year. So in the past with plastic free July I've pretty much just done my own thing and focused on the changes that I can make. But this was the first year that friends and family were genuinely keen to try making some plastic-free swaps. Thank you, Blue Planet 2. And again, with Plastic Free July, it's not about going completely plastic free. Like a zero waste lifestyle, it's not about being completely zero waste. It's about adopting realistic, sustainable changes that are gonna last a lifetime. So talking of friends and family, let's start off chatting about some of the changes that they made. Um, and I wanna kick off with my mother-in-law who asked if I could find her a plastic free alternative for chewing gum. So for those of you that don't know, regular chewing gum is made with a plastic gum base and it doesn't biodegrade. So I was really excited to find a brand called Glee Gum that I have here and it uses a natural gum base and it just comes in these little cardboard boxes and I really like it and also my mother-in-law really likes it too which is the main thing. So they come in a whole bunch of different flavours, this one's bubble gum and we've got lemon and lime. Uh, we've also tried their peppermint which is a kind of minty fresh one and the watermelon as well. So, oh gosh, sorry. <laughs> so that's what it looks like inside, pick those up in a minute. Got a bubble gum flavour, it just takes me right back to my childhood. So it's plastic free, completely, oh I've got that upside down. Biodegradable. <laughs> I could blow a bubble like two days ago with this stuff and now I'm feeling the pressure, clearly can't do it. So she was really pleased with these as a plastic free alternative and I think we're so lucky that there are so many plastic free alternatives to everyday items that contain plastic out there. So it often just takes a little bit of googling but yeah, plastic free gum. Who knew? Also my brother managed to make a few very simple swaps and he is a self-confessed lover of convenience so for him to make a few changes is a pretty big deal guys. So he filmed a few things and yeah let's see how he got on. So I've come to Drings in Greenwich which is my local butchers. I've taken along my tin to take my meat home in for a barbecue. But you're thinking about changing your packaging right? Definitely there's been a lot of pressure recently and I think we're going to go back to the old-fashioned paper wrapping it up just straight and giving it to the customer. We're gonna, we've already cancelled our carrier bag, so hopefully you know, we're working towards the zero packaging, zero plastic. It's a brilliant idea. This is the best butchers in London, by the way. So because I'm a millennial who lives in London, I love an avocado, but they always come packaged like this. Now, I'm pretty aware this black stuff they're sat in isn't recyclable and obviously loads of plastic around them, but M&S are now doing loose Hass avocados. Yes, avocado. Hello Oscar, just going to talk about our bin. Uh, so another thing that's been very helpful is this bin because for the first time ever we have a little food composting bag uh, and our council actually collects these um, and I cannot tell you how much it has reduced the volume of rubbish we're putting out. So we do about one bin bag a week now whereas we used to do probably 
I don't know, three, four of them. This is my downstairs loo where I keep all the old board games. Um, one change that I've made as a result of uh, Kate in my life is this loo roll. Who gives a crap? Um, it's really good. It's made from recycled materials. Uh, it's basically that bit of paper around it, which you can put straight to the recycling, um, and it comes in a box. Another friend of mine called Karen, who is from the blog N for Mummy, she was really keen to give Plastic Free July ago and film some of the little swaps and changes that she made. And she was super lucky to find a new bulk store that had opened up in her area, so she went down to check it out. So this is the Harmless store, which is my local um, zero waste store in Wood Green. It's in a place called Blue House Yard which is pretty cool. I'll give you a quick look. Look at all those pretty colours. Anyway, back to the harmless store. We'll go in. So you can get everything you could ever possibly need. Nuts, flour, oats, oil, and lots of different types of oil as well. Chilli flakes, which I get through a lot of, and all your herbs and spices and obviously things like couscous and pasta etc. There's a section where you can get all the things you need like your shampoo, your soap, your liquid soaps, cleaning products etc. A little beauty section, so you've got your deodorant, bars of soap, toothpaste etc. So I just get my um, fruit and veg from this little market stall here in Wood Green and I've just put it all in my bag. So we've come to buy our fruit and veg, we're in France. Stacey's got her basket, haven't you? And we've managed to find an organic fruit and veg stall. And look at this. All this beautiful, beautiful food. We're going to get some nectarines and a cucumber. For our journey back to the UK. Have you found the nectarines? We've recently changed from liquid soap to hard soap for reasons I think totally understand, but apparently according to Enfor Mummy it's a bit more environmentally friendly. And then finally another friend of mine who is a nutritionist, she was really keen to give Plastic Free July a go. Like she has just had this whole awakening of oh boy, plastic is everywhere, I better start doing something. So she sent me a few videos and pictures of some of the changes that she made. And again, she was really lucky to find that a cafe had also started selling a whole range of produce in bulk that was like 30 seconds from her house. So she was super excited to find that. And I think that's often the case when you start out on a zero waste journey or a, a plastic free one, just looking for things that are available to you. Suddenly you start to notice them everywhere. So I know it's very easy to think, oh, I don't have anything like that near me, but check and then check again because it's likely there's more than we feel that there is. Anyway, here's how Raya got on. I buy a lot of secondhand books old library books, recycling books, and I've always thought that that was a good thing, but in fact, it's resulted in my first epic fail of the month. Yeah, the old library books that you're trying to be environmental when you buy, they arrive in plastic, so that needs a rethink. Digital books, here I come. Okay, so we're gonna start with this uh, plant label. Uh, I basically decided after doing two beekeeping courses that I wanted to get some pollinator bee friendly plants on my balcony. So I went to my local nursery and found a bunch of lovely plants but they all come in plastic plant pots and the majority of them had little plastic labels like this as well. So I took uh, some reusable metal plant pots with me and some cloth bags and the guy serving me was really cool about it, he totally got it and removed all of the plant pots and the labels but when I got home, I found that one had remained. So yeah, I'm stuck with this one. But I have noticed that there's a website address. Gosh, I sound old. There is a website address on the back here um, that might mean I can email them and see if they'd be up for me suggesting alternatives. Weirdly, it says bamboo at the bottom there. So I don't know if that means that this is made from bamboo, but it, feels like plastic, I'll be honest. Okay, next up is this 
membership card, which isn't mine, it's actually my husband's, um, and it's from the National Trust, but it has expired and we were getting rid of it. So into the jar it went, the layer on the top has actually come off. And I remember emailing the National Trust about their membership cards last Plastic Free July, and they said, um, I've got it on email here, they said that their membership cards have a new stone core, which is a chalk-based paper product, and they comprise of 60 to 80% chalk, um, which is mixed with a small quantity of polyethylene, so it's still plastic. Um, and then the outer bit is definitely plastic, I think. They said it's uh, 760 micron non-bio PVC coating. Great. So even though in the email they said to me that this could apparently go straight in with my paper and cardboard recycling, I can't help but think that this would just contaminate it. So. Um, I might email them again and just see if there, there is any update on their cards because I get that they've tried to do something better but still not quite there yet. So that was another bit of plastic that crept in. Ah, now as I mentioned in my previous video I was trying to buy fewer bottles of beer because they come with these caps which look all innocent and metal and easy to recycle but that's not the case because they've got plastic on the inside to create a seal. So um, I have been refilling beers whenever I can, but it's still a bit of a faff and sometimes, like I said in my previous video, it's nice to just pop out and buy a bottle of organic beer. The Plastic Free July, I managed to only buy one, oh, two. I thought I got away with just one. Two bottles of beer and I think these were from, that one I definitely went out to buy. I think this one was from an occasion maybe where we ate out and I thought, oh, I should bring that back with me to add to the jar. So that's not bad for the whole month, but I actually managed to get a couple of beer refills throughout July, which was fine. But overall, that's a heck of a lot less than last last month. I can't remember where the jar is, but I had one, two, three, four, five. I think I had like six or seven bottle tops. Up next are these little plastic windows that come on most envelopes these days. I feel like they didn't used to be as prevalent as they are now, but they seem to be everywhere. Um, so we still get a few of these. I've done my best to get off all sort of mailing lists and junk mail and all that sort of jazz, but occasionally we still get some mail and it comes with these plastic envelopes. Now, normally I can put these straight into my paper recycling and the system sort of removes them as part of the recycling process but um, I thought I should keep them for Plastic Free July just to sort of demonstrate that they are a piece of plastic waste that still unnecessarily exists. So yeah, there's another one. Another envelope window. Next we have this bit of plastic tape, which as I peeled it off, took some of the paper cardboard with it. But this is from our loo roll delivery from Who Gives a Crap. So they deliver a box of 48 rolls, all wrapped in just paper, and the box is just a cardboard box, but it does come with a little bit of plastic tape on it. Now, I think they are working on finding something strong enough to hold up through the delivery process, but for now they're still using a bit of plastic tape. But generally, I love them. They donate 50% of their, ch their profits to uh, sanitation projects and water charities. They also give you the choice of recycled or bamboo loo roll, depending on your preference. So I love them, but they do come with a little bit of plastic tape. So no biggie compared to the amount of plastic that comes with regular loo rolls. What else? What else? Aha, a receipt. So I don't normally get receipts. I normally say, no thanks, I'm good, and just refuse the receipt. Even if one is automatically printed out, I still refuse it because I feel like the more people that refuse them, the more likely the shop is to kind of go, hey, we're wasting a lot of paper on receipts here. Um, and also more companies are starting to be able to email a receipt to you if you need it. So um, I normally refuse it, but I do get a milk delivery and every once in a while, probably, I want to say like five times in the year, the milkman leaves me a little receipt and because I'm not sure whether this is thermal paper or not, but I suspect it might be, it likely contains BPA and that means that it would contaminate the recycled paper um, section. So I'm not entirely sure what to do with it, but basically it's trash. 
These are some plastic labels from my yogurt. So I normally try and make my own yogurt when I can be bothered, but honestly, sometimes I just buy it in a glass jar with a metal lid, but it does come with a plastic label on it. And I don't quite get why companies are still using plastic labels when there are other alternatives out there. But anyway, um, I've saved these to put in my jar. And I think what I'm gonna do again is email a company and see if they'd be up for making a change. These little things, can you even see them on screen? Probably, there you go. <laughs> these are the dropper things from inside, like essential oil bottles. Actually, these are from the oil of oregano bottles. So I use that if I find I have a tickle of a sore throat. It just works brilliantly in about a centimeter of water, about 10 drops. I freaking love it. And it lasts a really long time, but we just had two bottles that seemed to come to an end around the same sort of time. So these are the two of those. Now in the past, I have actually saved these to reuse the bottles. Um, so if I'm buying essential oils from bulk, if I can occasionally, then I'll reuse them. But generally they are just waste. I don't think they can be recycled. I'm not seeing anything on there. This is a pen lid and it's not even my pen lid. I just saw it whilst we were out and about walking. It was like on the pavement and I felt bad that it would probably end up being eaten by a bird or something. So I picked it up and then put it in my jar. So I'm not technically responsible for this one, but I felt like I should pick it up. There you go. I have a few tags from clothing that I bought, mostly secondhand actually. Some more tape. I don't know what this is from, but a delivery of some kind. Uh, yeah, I honestly can't remember what that's from, but just a bit of tape. And another piece of tiny plastic tape. Focus. So that's everything that was in the plastic free July jar. Um, now there are things that we use that are plastic that haven't made it into this jar that we're kind of still using. So for example, the uh, plastic bristles from my husband's toothbrush, he's still using it, so they haven't gone in, but they would have done had they sort of come to the end of their life um, during Plastic Free July. Also, he uses some foam earplugs to help him sleep. He just can't sleep without them, basically. And he's tried the uh, natural beeswax ones, but they just really didn't work for him. So he has these little foam ones that he's still using. So he's making them last as long as possible. Um, so those would have gone in the jar if they'd run out during Plastic Free July, but they haven't. So I hope you had a successful Plastic Free July, and I hope it sort of spurred you on maybe to keep up some good habits and maybe see if there's any other little changes and swaps you can make throughout the rest of the year. Bye. You can still see me though, right?